Let's return to This Week in America. Here's your host, Rick Bratton. Welcome back, everybody. This Week in America, Coast to Coast, Ami Colsey's poem collection is designed for everybody to lie back comfortably on their couch, holding a cup of cocoa, and lose themselves into a world of thoughts. These thoughts seem to be so rhythmic that she calls them musical thoughts. The poems in her book mainly focus on nature, human behavior, and elements which influence the mood of a person. The verses, musical thoughts, a poetry ponder about may reflect one or another point of view. Just reading them may make you think that Ami lives in an imaginary world, but a deeper look at the words will reveal to you something very real, something to which you can relate yourself. Ami is a teenage girl, normal student doing normal things, yet dreams big. Her book is probably the first step that she has taken to make her dreams come true. Most of her poems are influenced by elements around us, but she likes to describe them as if she's writing fantasy. Ami is a student at the University of Alberta pursuing a Bachelor of Science degree. Ami Colsey, author of Musical Thoughts, a Poetry to Ponder, is with us on This Week in America. Ami, welcome to the program. It's great to have you with us today. Thank you for having me. Um, it, yeah, I'm very excited. It's a pleasure to have you here to talk about musical thoughts, a poetry to ponder about. What was the idea behind the poetry you write? When you write poetry and you do it so well, what are some of your thoughts, your motivations? Um, well, the thing is that I don't have a concrete process about how I come up with when I write poems. So it's very genuine and you can say very organic uh, when I write a poem. It's just that it happens to me kind of thing. And yeah, this thought, this thought pops up in my head and I want to put uh, on paper in the most genuine way. I don't want to tweak it. And that's how I just write a poem. Maybe that's why this is doing so well and resonating with people because you really don't have any boundaries. It's just sort of what you're thinking you put down on paper. And it gives us a chance to share those thoughts and to create new thoughts of our own as we're enjoying the poems in Ami's book, Musical Thoughts and Poetry to Ponder About. What makes you write poems? When did you get started? What influences did you have in writing poetry? Oh, yeah, that's an interesting question. Um, well, I was just in second grade, and this one day, just out of the front, I kind of shuffled a few words, and I was like, and I, ta- I was talking to my grandmother, and I was like, hey, grandma, so here's a poem. I definitely <laughs> made no sense at all. It had no rhyming, it has no construct, nothing at all. But I, it's like, you, we always, uh, everybody starts somewhere. Um, and then, in fourth grade, I wrote this poem uh, about a tree, a lonely tree, and that was the first poem, which was very comprehensive, and I'm still very proud of it. <laughs> yeah, that's amazing. The first one is still one you go back and look on. Some people would go back and cringe when they look at the first creative work that they uh, they produced. You go back <laughs> and look at that, and, and obviously, you saw potential in that. You enjoyed writing that. Our guest on the program is Ami Kalsi. If you're Googling that, it's A-M-I-K-A-L-S-I. Her book is Musical Thoughts, A Poetry to Ponder About. The book is available at all Amazon sites at Barnes & Noble, Page, Turner's Bookstore, Chapters Indigo in Canada, Waterstones in the UK, Booktopia in Australia, New Zealand, and a whole lot more. And of course, if you go to our website, thisweekinamerica.us, you can link on directly to the pageturner.us bookstore website, get information on Ami's book there as well. I know when you when you write all of these at the moment they're probably all your favorite poems. But are there any that you would put in the, in the favorite poem category that you go back and you think, okay, I really expressed what I was thinking at the time. I was able to put words on paper to express myself. Are there are there any particular favorites in in musical thoughts? Hmm. Well, so. Every poem is special to me, but it, the thing is that I wrote these poems, you can say, at least five years ago from now. So, But there are a couple of poems I still resonate with, and I think it has to be A Wish in My Heart. It's the sixth poem in the book. Um, so the thing about it is I'm just talking about being silly, like how, not being silly, you can say how a child uh, is not afraid of setting big goals for themselves. Yes. So it's more about that. We don't have any social boundaries. We don't have any obligations. 
So yeah, this is my dream. I'm gonna go for it. So I think I go back to bed probably whenever I forget that my why and my how. How will I do it? Yeah. You know, and that's a lesson for all of us. Don't do not give up that quality to remember what it's like to, you know, in my mind, I can do anything I want to. And sometimes, like we've talked about before, you put uh, you put boundaries and you're afraid to try something new. Obviously, you put that aside and you're going to try what you think you can accomplish and that uh, hold on to that quality. Musical Thoughts of Poetry to Ponder About by uh, Ami Kalsi is our guest on the program. Are you working on another book now? Is there a second book that you're you're working on? Actually, yes. And I'm very, very excited about the next project. Um, we're not going to disclose the title yet, but yeah, it's almost done. It will be launched this year, and it's also a poetry. Um, I'm very proud of this second project as well. <laughs> well what, what's different about this for musical thoughts? You probably learned something in writing musical thoughts and publishing it, being able to to get the word out there, getting feedback from people. Is there a difference in, in the way you, uh, you're you approaching the second book? Oh, yeah, sure. So my first book, it was more about just getting the poetry out there. So this, this book was not written in a very planned way. I just had some bunch of poems and I was like put them together and here's a book but my second book I first had an outline for the book and every poem in it it is written after I had the outline and so it's very organized so here's one giveaway I can share the second book it has chapters based upon emotions and every chapter cater to a particular emotions and all the poems in it so it's interesting to me. Yes, Ami Kalsi, our guest on the program, Musical Thoughts of Poetry to Ponder About is the book we're talking about. Second book will be coming out. And I mentioned in the beginning, beginning that, that Ami is a college student, University of Alberta, pursuing a degree, Bachelor of Science degree. How has that impacted your writing, your, your writing of poetry, being a, a college student? Has it changed any? Um, the only thing, the only way university has changed in how I express myself in general is that now I have become more confident. Earlier, I used to be, uh, what still my elders think, should I say that or not? But coming to university, I expanded my boundaries. I made friends from, you can say, virtually across the world. And my mindset expanded and now I'm not at all afraid to say anything I stand for. You know, you were such a talented writer. I mentioned pursuing a degree, a bachelor of science degree in, in science. Are you interested in, in being a full-time writer? That would be amazing, but poetry is something I enjoy as a hobby. And so I don't really uh, think that I will become a full-time writer because I don't want what I like to turn into a chore. Well, I was just going to say, is it fun for you now? I mean, there's really no pressure, is there, except the pressure you put on yourself. It's not like, wow, I've got rent coming due and I need to write poetry and <laughs> sell it to somebody so I can pay the rent for the next month. Is that part of the fun of this now? Is it something that you can you can do when you want to do it? Yeah, so poetry even now, it's just a thing that I do for uh, me there is no obligation to me to complete a manuscript or that yes. I have to pay bills or anything. I just do it when I want to. And just, it, it's just because, so yeah, it's kind of honest. You can say. You are a very creative person. Are there other outlets that you use to express yourself other than the, uh, the poetry that you do so well? Oh yeah, sure. I love participating in co-curricular like since I was a kid, so that helped me to get myself uh, involved in so many artistic outlets. I love dancing, like anything. Um, I love singing, but I'm not very good at it, but it is. <laughs> um, and I also like to paint. So I have, I'm, I'm kind of jack of all arts. 
perfect to none. <laughs> well, let's talk about that. Well, you do a, an excellent job in the poetry. I've not seen your painting, and I'm sure that is very well done as well. Mm-hmm. Are the arts sort of, and sometimes, especially in school, whenever schools have problems, the first thing they do is cut back on the arts. And I'm thinking, boy, we're really missing out on something. I think the arts allow us to, to tap into ourselves. Talk about the role of arts in your life. And, and you are where you are today because of uh, of your creative side of, of the arts. Yeah, true. So art has definitely shaped me as a person. Um, how I think because uh, artistic uh, activities, they in general don't limit anybody to what point you can think uh, and what kind of ideology you can have. It's always such an open boundary. You can explore yourself. You can play with the boundaries if they exist, but they don't. Um, so it's very freeing and it's kind of therapy uh, and free yourself from all the stress that uh, this world uh, has us has on our us, like due to the monotonous casual sense. Um, yeah. Yes. You know, you, you mentioned the, the second book that you're working on without giving a whole lot of it away. Are there some, uh, mm-hmm. uh, some elements of the book, some fun facts, maybe you could, you can talk about that, that, that you're working on in your second book. Oh yeah, um, the second book. So t- the fun fact about the second book is that there are some of the poems in second book that have hidden brownies, you can say. Um, so there, it's all like that poem as a literary thing is very interesting, but it's also a puzzle. So if you are careful enough, you'll find some hidden words or hidden phrases that only few people will find and even fewer will be able to know that why it is, why it is there. So it's scary and funny and interesting. <laughs> All at the same time. So we can look forward to that. Ami's first book is available, Musical Thoughts, a poetry to ponder about. A couple of minutes left in the program. Can you give us some uh, uh, story behind some of the poems in Musical Thoughts? I mentioned that they focus on nature, human behavior, elements like that. Uh, any stories you'd like to share on some of the poems that you that you put together for Musical Thoughts? Um, so... Well, all of these poems were written a while ago, but yeah, I do remember the first poem that I put in this book, uh, Giggles of the Valley Girl. So this, the whole poem, it's uh, based actually on a dream. <laughs> so sometimes <laughs> I write poems on whatever leaves mark on me. And I don't know, I think as a kid, you just overthink about everything. I overthink about everything even now. Um, but yeah. So it was just a dream, and I was like, oh, a cool friend, and and I just go to her, and she's not there. Uh, it kind of reflects, like, how in school I always struggled to have, like, meaningful friendships. I had lots of friends. I still have lots of friends, but meaningful friendships, I always look forward to them. And this poem is kind of subconscious of a child just uh, putting it out there. You know, it's interesting you mentioned dreams, and that was the basis for the poem you're talking about that you'll find in, in Ami's collection, Musical Thoughts and Poetry to Ponder About. You'll find it at pageturner.us, a, a number of bookstores, and I'll mention those in a second at the end of the program. But it seems like you sort of write about whatever mood strikes you at the time. This is not something that's forced where you sit and say, okay, it's been a couple of days since I've written something. I really need to get to work here. Is that true that your sort of your best poetry is when something strikes you maybe out of the blue, like a uh, like a dream, something that you're not really thinking about pops in your mind and you're able to write very emotionally about that? Yeah, true. I I definitely agree with that. I don't have any set schedule or set pattern that, oh, I have to write about this now in this way. So it just happens when it happens. So that kind of gives me freedom to write uh, in a way that I like. And it makes sure that I'm being very, very honest when I write my poetry. 
what has this been like for you? Publishing the book, having people respond to it. You've got family, friends, a lot of people from around the world that probably have read the book and been moved by it that you don't even know about. But what's what's this been like for you? The feedback that you get from family and friends from uh, from your book. You're a published author now. What's what's that like? Oh, it's just very special to me because uh, poetry is as a hobby. It's one of the first um, thing, or you can say, artistic skill that I picked up while growing up. Um, oh, I actually picked the skill from my dad. So uh, it's very special that I'm being recognized for a skill that uh, connects me with my father and also uh, has a link with how I grew up and how I developed as a person. With us on the program, Ami Kalsi, that's A-M-I, Kalsi is K-A-L-S-I. You'll find the book, which is Musical Thoughts of Poetry to Ponder About, available at Amazon, all the Amazon sites, Barnes & Noble, Page Turner's Bookstore, Chapters Indigo in Canada, Waterstones in the UK, Booktopia in Australia, New Zealand, and a lot more. If you'd like to go to our website this week in America.us, you can link on directly to pageturner.us, the bookstore there. Get information on Ami's book there as well. I mentioned the, the publishing aspect of this, and you've worked with Page Turner uh, uh, Press and Media. Talk uh, just in the seconds we have left at the end of the program. What's that been like for you working with them? You've put the book together. You've done the creative part of, of writing musical thoughts and poetry to ponder about. They've worked with you in publishing. What's that experience been like for you? Oh, Paige Turner and Press Media, they have like a, a whole lot of wonderful team. Um, um, everybody uh, at this publishing house, they were so cooperative to me uh, and Every time I was like, oh, sorry, I can't um, talk today or have this meeting today due to school, they would always be very patient. They would be like, it's all right. And also just with the process of putting everything together and putting it out there, they were very professional. Uh, they were very true to their job. And I would recommend uh, down. Yeah. Well, I know, and they work with a number of authors. They're very impressed with you and what you've done in your book, Musical Thoughts, a Poetry to Ponder About. Our guest on the program has been Ami Kolsi. That's A-M-I-K-A-L-S-I. -I. You can link onto our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Book available in a number of places. I'll send you to pageturner.us in, in the bookstore. Ami, it's been a pleasure having you on the program. Congratulations on the success of Musical Thoughts. Good luck with your second book. Hopefully, we'll have a chance to talk about that as well. Would love to do that. Good luck in school, and thank you for being with us on the program today. Thank you for having me. It has been our pleasure. Ami Colsi, our guest on the program, the book Musical Thoughts, a Poetry to Ponder About. Information on Ami available at our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Back on today's program after these messages. This Week in America is online. You can visit our website, thisweekinamerica.us. Scott Pinkerton, associate producer of This Week in America. Jay Anderson, segment producer. Ben Watson, webmaster. Otto Bache, director of engineering and TV production. This Week in America produced and is a trademark of Blue Funk Broadcasting, LLC. For information on all of our guests and to listen to this week's show, our website again at thisweekinamerica.us. And I'm Sean Bratton, executive producer of This Week in America.